Oh, the Liberty Bell. It looks like it hasn't been dusted since the 1700s. Oh, dear Freedom Ring. Much like my Freedom home. Ring. <laughs> so I'd like to welcome you all to the uh, Rainbow Quest That's experience. Cool. And a couple of changes are happening with us now. We're maturing as a nonprofit, and we're realizing that the Rainbow Quest experience is actually sponsored by Rainbow Viking, not Rainbow Quest. Rainbow Quest oh. is the nonprofit that distributes the game, does teacher training, uh, does, presents workshops and attends conferences, and uh, and connects to experts. And then Rainbow Viking uses those experts to develop new products. Oh, we have someone oh. new coming. Uh, and um, and then Rainbow Viking licenses the game back to Rainbow Quest. So with Rain the Rainbow Quest experience here tonight, we can oh. be a little more adult. We don't have to be as squeaky clean as we tend to be for um, most Rainbow Quest things because we are family friendly and for ages 11 and up. Oh. Uh, we are attempting to remind people that we are more than just a, you know, um, an uplifting and informative game. Uh, we're just gosh darn good fun. So now we feature gorgeous drinking glasses. Oh no, I forgot my beverages, whoops. We feature oh. gorgeous drinking uh, shot glasses on the website. <laughs> so if you need to boost your immune system during a stressful time like election season, and you wanna take a chug some, you know, goji berry juice or something, or if you feel like you need a shot of something stronger, like holy water, you know, you could just pour yourself a little shot in a delightful rainbow quest mug. Ah, oh, you can feel so good about it. Hey, Brian. Hey, Hey, yeah. where, can, where can we find these wonderful beverage drinking vessels? I'm so glad you asked. You can <laughs> just point your browser to www.rainbowquest.org. Notice the ORG. We are a 501c3 mm -hmm. nonprofit organization. Uh, we are doing the heavy lifting in all of the suicide prevention, school safety, and anti-bullying work. We actually have an activity that helps. We don't, we're, we don't just talk about it. We provide an experience, a well-researched experience that uh, really gets results. It, it amazes us every time we exhibit it or watch people play it. Maybe you'll be amazed here tonight, right here in the Rainbow Room with me. Maybe some of you at home who will watch it another time will find inspiration and comfort in knowing that, first of all, you do not have to be gay to play, which is nice. We have all kinds of people here uh, joining us for the Rainbow Quest experience. Um, you aren't expected to really know all the information in the game because, for gosh sakes, it's not been in the school curricula yet. You know, we're actually the only ready to use teaching resource that's a comprehensive introduction to a, a scattering of diverse and divergent ideas and events and people and places and things that have to do with the LGBTQ plus community and things that we never used to know about them. And for the most part, we try to present things that are you know, really good that you don't know about. Um, just things that we're still discovering in our next edition, which we are currently doing the research on. Uh, we have a lot more information about a couple of former White House presidents speaking of election day uh, mm -hmm. so gosh uh john f kennedy uh abraham lincoln james buchanan mary todd lincoln may have had a little something going on there um uh, we're learning a, perhaps <laughs> perhaps i mean mary todd lincoln she had a pretty rough life so um i'm not surprised mm -hmm. that you know people are able to write comedic plays about her i kind of would like i would have mm -hmm. liked to i would have loved to have seen mary uh Oh, Mary on Broadway, which is all about her. But yeah, she led a really uh, difficult life. She was made fun of for uh, being practical, very similar to Jimmy and Rosalind Carter in the 1970s when they issued, you know, uh, gold-plated dinnerware in favor of things that were affordable and practical. They were mocked. You know, it wasn't presidential. It wasn't royal enough. And with, when Mary Todd Lincoln was widowed, there was no pension for her. She got no benefits. She had nothing. Uh -huh. And she had to start selling off furniture and clothing and her her kids were just embarrassed by it so anyway yes like so many so many families you know there's a black sheep black sheep in the family the person who's targeted the poor deer who needs everybody's attention and intervention whether they want it or not of course sometimes it's necessary sometimes it's um, arbitrary so with the request experience what i'm trying to do is um have a really good time getting to know the people playing the game um getting to entertain the people who observe now some of you may be watching this on the live stream probably not because the technology i'm not going to count on it working tonight but um with so many things anytime we play this game in a public space in a lobby of a hotel or a cafeteria or a bar or a restaurant every single time we get a, like a group of four or five people to play we end up with about 15 people encircling <laughs> us and at first we're never sure uh oh uh do they like what we're doing or is it upsetting them and to our uh delight they are usually just joining right in and having a grand time and it's just fun, just fun. So a lot of you who are in the Rainbow Room here with me tonight were instrumental in helping bring us to um, version two of the Rainbow Room experience. We started out as live from the Rainbow Room featuring really good live music, which I can no longer help provide here. 
um, we had special guests that we would interview, and we did not really feature the game itself very much. And that's really, that's right. you know, that's what we live, that's what we live for. Uh, for us, every time someone plays this game and other people get to see it happen, we are, pro we, there's a really good chance we're saving a life. You know, the ripple effect. Uh, we, we affirm, we, we don't malign people in the LGBTQ plus community, nor do we malign the heterosexual players who join us. You know, it, it's a beautiful level playing field when we get together. So um, this year, we decided to kind of ditch the music and focus on what's near and dear to us, getting people to be familiar with the Rainbow Quest game. We are coming up with new versions of it. Um, soon everyone will carry it in their pocket for when they have some downtime and want to get to know a stranger really well. Yeah, the Rainbow Quest travel version, and we are holding a, you know, we're requesting people to nominate names for the Rainbow Quest travel edition. I was told that Rainbow Quest on the go does not sound good. So, yeah. Okay, you're laughing, Barbara. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm also, on we're always open to suggestions. <laughs> I know, it's not like Rainbow Quest on the can. <laughs> what, what? Oh, Rainbow Quest <laughs> Travel Edition. That well, never occurred to me until just now. <laughs> well, I have been referring to it as that. But it's always fun to come up with something catchy, provocative, adorable, and irresistible. And that's what we're aiming for. So, and that's going to be compact, small, cheap, lightweight. Um, We are meeting with some grant writers, and we're going to really be trying now to get the grants that we need. We've had some wonderful friends of Rainbow Quest who have donated what I consider generous sums of money to help us keep our mission going. I don't think we had any idea when we began how expensive it would be to do the good work. You know, no good deed goes unpunished, and uh, there's a lot of travel expenses involved. Uh, we are incredibly frugal. Boy, do we stretch a penny. I, I learned a lot from my mother about working with a small budget. Um, and we're going places. Uh, we just uh, fulfilled our second order to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Colleges in New Zealand are respecting the value, they're recognizing the value of Rainbow Quest. And it's so unfortunate that shipping costs almost twice the cost of the game itself. It's kind of crazy. But for, somehow we're getting this international reputation. So what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking of for the future, because now that we've had a little bit of time to try playing the game rather quickly without the touchy-feely stuff, I admit, I miss some of the touchy-feely stuff. I, you know, it's, um, I just do. I like that stuff. Um, I was wondering if maybe we would try having a special guest again, you know, different people who perform uh, community work, who are activists. Uh, you know, Les was a guest um, here. He's an author and an expert, probably the world's oh. preeminent expert on the gay male subculture called the Bear Community. Yeah. Yes, Les? Yeah, and, and, and now I'm mopping floors and emptying trash cans. <laughs> Thank you. No, never mind. Okay. <laughs> what I always want to put on a pedestal as well. Yeah, no, I also do <laughs> clean the toilets at Rainbow Quest headquarters. Yeah, fame is not quite as as, as um, 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 flashy as it sounds. Yeah. Anyways, no, sorry. <laughs> well, fame doesn't. Fame does not necessarily equate with financial success. Yeah, you know, it just doesn't. <laughs> there are plenty of people that were not recognized for their value until you know it was too late to reward them. So you know. Uh, no. Don't worry about it, Les. You could, you, you know what? You could still be an expert on our show sometime. Okay. You, know you could talk about what's been happening um, since the last time you were on. So we're going to look to get some special guests on the show for a little bit, just a little discussion and dialogue with the people in the Rainbow Room, and then play the game. But do it as what do we call that? Um, Rainbow Quest Rapid Fire. Oh, that sounds military, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't think I like that. Um, Ring, well, we'll think of it. I actually had a wonderful idea for it earlier, but didn't have a chance to write it down. Um, what it would be is that instead of attempting to actually play a whole game from mm -hmm. the better world, from the start to the better world for everyone, where everyone gets three choices, to move the game along and still keep it safe with choices, we could um, have people play. And when they roll the dice, they can move the higher of the two numbers or the sum of the two numbers. So it would eliminate one choice, speed up the game considerably, and we would get special surprise guests who we would all get to know so much better. I did invite all of the mayoral, can not mayoral, but city council candidates. There were six of them uh, in the town where I live, Asbury Park, New Jersey. I invited them all to play Rainbow Quest as a fundraiser in front of a live audience. Somehow they turned me down, even though I think three, four, oh. five of them might have been homosexual. Oh, well, <laughs> go figure. Go figure. So I'd be really curious to um, get your, your feedback. You've all been with us for a long time now. You're, you've been supporters, believers, lifelines to keeping our Rainbow Quest lifeline afloat. And you know we yeah. do continue to do astonishing work. It, it, I'm, my mind is blown with how far we've gone on so little. 
So I'd, I'd love to see some guests if it's not too much trouble for you. It's I found that so helpful really. and it's so interesting. I like it. It's fun. Yeah. It's really fun because you never know what you're going to learn about people. Um, even the people that I thought I was thoroughly impressed by, I learned so much more about them. And, and again, it's informal and we don't screen our questions. And if we stump people, it makes, oh, I don't know what I just knocked over. Um, whoops. But um, yeah, it, it's hard. We never. <laughs> Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I think Martin sensed the tension in the rainbow room earlier today. I was um doing I was sitting there doing work, you know, the usual thing. And all of a sudden, like, you know, this I'm like, why well, it's cold. It's like it's cold in here. And I'm not gonna say that I felt a gray cool mist, because Martin wouldn't do that. Martin was not about cool damn foggy mists. You know, he had enough of that. I remember the one time his whole family came to visit us when we lived in Maine. We bought watercolor sets for everyone and French berets. And the goal was to travel to scenic locations in Maine and stop and do watercolors. Because his mom was having ambulatory issues. We thought, we'll just sit, we'll do watercolors. Every single place we went to, Cadillac Mountain, uh, Popham Beach, uh, like wherever we went, there would be a fog would roll in. And we wouldn't be able to see the paper in front of us to do a watercolor on. It was crazy. So Martin, and Martin didn't like cold and damp. So, you know, the cold, the cold wasn't him. But I looked up. And the, the ceiling fan was on high, did not hmm. touch the remote control. And yeah, you know, it happens. He's, he's a sneaky little guy there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yes. So um, I'd be curious to get your feedback on that. And I would like to do um, a check-in. Uh, I, I know that a lot of people, I think 69% of the American population was reporting that they were feeling quite anxious about the election <laughs> that's still going on today. And I know I was feeling really anxious about it and wondering, hmm, I wonder what's going to happen. Well, um, have, how have you all been? Have you, have, how have you been coping? Anyone want to chime in on that? It's been difficult because I work with the Latino community and the undocumented community. And that's right. It's very scary what might happen in the, in the future, you know? That's right. Um, and... No, I really don't, Sarah. That's one of the reasons we like having <laughs> experts on the show because, no, I really don't know what, I mean, I think that, I mean, I don't know, I think that any undocumented people will probably have a difficult time no matter who is elected because now um, someone has made it seem as if migrants are, or immigrants, whatever, are the root of all evil in the United States, which like, I, I didn't know that. That seemed to happen all of a sudden. They're eating cats and dogs. Who knew? Well, um, but I mean, I understand that a lot of Hispanic voters are voting, you know, for someone who I think demonizes them. I don't understand it. So I don't know. Do you have more well, to add to that, Sarah? Well, I don't know many people who are voting for him as far as Hispanic people go, but I do know my dad is a Trump supporter, even though we're Chinese in descent. And he, I don't know, it's, I think that, um, you know, there's a difference between undocumented immigrants and documented immigrants, because sometimes, I hate to say this, but sometimes documented immigrants think they're better than undocumented immigrants. <laughs> like my parents, they look down on undocumented immigrants. <laughs> Even though they're they're like they're both citizens, but they don't. I I've worked with immigration lawyers before, and they know that, but they don't really believe what I say when I come to tell them like how the laws have changed, changed how difficult it is to get in, how difficult it is to get a work permit, and um, you know I think that um the government and other other entities like powerful people are making money off of undocumented people because of the cheap labor, cheaper labor. Um, also like a lot of these detention centers are like for profit, so it, the more people who are in there, the more somebody gets money for it, and um, there's not a lot of people to stick up for them, you know, because there's a lot of misinformation going on. A lot of misinformation and it's really bad and uh it, you know i'm it hurts me in that and i hate to say it hurts me because i'm not i'm just the person i'm just someone who comes and tries to help people but um, you have empathy you, know, you have empathy you put a lot of energy yeah. into doing this it has to hurt because like, like i speak spanish and i speak spanish with a lot of latino immigrants and like i have friends i have friends and i worry about them and i worry about people even people who aren't my friends and it's i like even just crossing the border for people is so traumatic because people think that when you cross the border, you just jump over a fence and then you're in America. No, what happens is you have to go through miles and miles and miles of desert. There are skeletons in the desert. Okay, well, I'm gonna there... have to. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop, stop you here. I am. I mean, I'm not sorry that I asked, but obviously, okay. you, like I said, you have a wealth of information about this and remind me of things that I tend to not think about. For example, I hadn't really thought about people who were documented um, resenting and looking down on the undocumented, and I do find that in any community, and what I'm learning a lot now about privilege and i think val mm -hmm. probably also mm -hmm. um, understands that I, I think of a lot of communities that struggled that were like that were the lowest of the low and had to really struggle and work hard in spite of all kinds of needless adversity imposed upon them out of hate and fear but there are other communities today that 
you know, they don't, you know, that was them. And what they're concerned about is the privileges, like e even back then, there were certain privileges that people had as hard as it was for them. And it's, I remember when free college tuition was an issue uh, in a presidential campaign, and my college students did not want free tuition because they thought, you know, why should other people get what I worked so hard for? And I'm going to guess that your parents have a little bit of that feeling. Why should these people get something that I work so hard for it may be unfair and untrue, but that's what people think. It's unfortunate. It wasn't um, easy for my parents uh, to get here either, but they didn't cross the border. Yeah. But um, lots of like they were in Burma. It wasn't easy. It was in Burma. For most immigrants, it wasn't easy. For no. most immigrants, it meant you know giving up security. Well, <laughs> giving up the fear that you were accustomed to, the fear and abuse <laughs> that you understood, and risking everything to face new kinds of adversity, but with hope and opportunity. And I am hoping that um, this election is going to um, be a good moment in our test of democracy. And I say that with incredible trepidation and maybe a little bit of nausea <laughs> as I worry. Um, it, because I, I think most of us are like frogs in boiling water. You know, it's like, oh, wow, we're watching. We're just watching. Isn't this terrible? It's like watching, you know, at a, a train wreck or something. Huh. Just tis, tis. Imagine that. And I think. I mean, I know I've done as much as I possibly could do uh, to get out the vote and to talk to people about election issues. And I feel yeah. that still it wasn't enough, both with money and, and effort. And oh, it's it just maddens me that we don't have laws in this country requiring people to vote. But, mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that the worst things won't happen. I'm hoping the best things do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wish other that, yes, Valerie. Yeah, yes, I, because I'm currently at my parents' house and the TV's on all the time and all the political ads, I really wish that people's pants would burst into flames when they're lying. I think that would make <laughs> such a big difference in the information that we get. <laughs> because it troubles me that people can just blatantly lie about things and misrepresent. And it's so blatant. And yeah. for some reason, yeah. that now seems to be okay. I mean, it's like there's no ethical, moral compass. Mm -hmm. um, and that troubles me a lot. And and I feel like so many groups of people that I love, you know, and I am a woman, you know, are, are at risk. That's um, right. it's, it's like if you're not a rich white dude, you're mm -hmm. kind of got a target on your back. Yeah. yeah. If you have money, even even adversity is a little bit easier to overcome. You know, you yeah. can do things. You can afford to do a lot of self-soothing things that other people can't mm -hmm. afford to do. That's one. I mean, that's why learning meditation is so great. You know, it's free, yeah. but yeah. it isn't as wonderful as you know maybe a weekend in Acapulco eating ice cream sundays. You know, mm. uh, and make, make a wish. Okay, make a wish, Charlie. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, why don't we get in there? And again, think about the idea of doing kind of like a rapid round version of Rainbow Quest where you get two choices instead of three, and it includes playing with a special guest. I already have a couple of people lined up that I'm thinking about. I just heard from Felipe Rose today, who chatted me up to say, give him a, he wants me to give him a call this weekend about creating the Rainbow Quest game show, which I think would be oh. a hoot. And, and tell, tell us about Felipe Rose. I think I know who you're talking about. Um, I can't imitate the sound that he does, but um, he was one of the original members of the village people and he was the oh. native american guy okay and he oh. is a neighbor here in the area that we moved to um he you know really likes rainbow quest a lot mm -hmm. and when he first proposed doing a game show he came over uh, actually, like 40 years ago when right after we moved here he came over with a bottle of tequila and a couple of avocados and made guacamole for us and we played rainbow quest and drank tequila Ooh, i guess it was a drinking game we thought we would get some good video clips to use but no anyway um and when Felipe said, this, yeah, let's do a game show, Martin and I uh, were thinking, I don't know, you know, we don't want to lose the aura, the, the moment that it creates. It's unique. And now we're thinking, you know what, there's all kinds of moments to be created. And it doesn't all have to be one version of a tabletop board game. So we're fine with making the travel version. Whatever we do, we're going to make sure it's fun and uplifting and educational and safe for people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, would you like to actually start Rainbow Quest? A little quick round? Alrighty. Sure. Come on, okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. We are getting ready for the Rainbow Quest experience, everybody. Um, here is the, I guess I should highlight uh, the dice tower. I was having a little, a little Halloween moment there. Was that the thing that I just saw up there? <laughs> yes. Yes. We have a lot, we have a lot of very expensive props here in the Rainbow Room. Oh. You know, people are coming here all the time asking, can I borrow, you know, the clue phone? <laughs> they need a rotary phone. Yeah. Or, you know, oh, what about the modern clue phone? You know, this really nice 
jeweled one. Ooh. Very sparkly. <laughs> it's very sparkly. Ah, yeah, speaking of sparkly, just going to take a quick look out, admire the people in the audience. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're so sweet, so cute. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh. Thank you all for being here. And, oh, I hear things uh, dinging. I'm not sure why. Oh, okay. I have no idea what those sounds were. Okay, so who would like to go first? I'll go first. Sarah! Yeah. Okay. Our dumpling, you know what? I, gosh, I have dumplings in the other room. I brought stuff up from the Rainbow Room kitchen and left everything in the other room. But let's get started. Sarah, which color would you like to be? Red, please. You would like to be red. I'm going to highlight you. <laughs> oh, spotlight. There we go. Whoa. Okay, spotlighting you. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Whoa, ho. There we go. Wow, this is so much fun adding all these spotlights. Yeah, okay. Whoa, now we're all here where we belong. Okay, I'm sorry, which color did you want to be, Sarah? Red. Red, okay. Red. I am going to put the dice into the Rainbow Quest dice tower. Ooh, oh my God, it's so that's fabulous. new. It's, cool. it's so fa Very fancy. Yes. The Rainbow Quest dice it's so tower. It's so rainbow-y. Yes, cool. it's, it's thrilling. It's fabulous. All right. So, Sarah, you had a six and a one. Now, do you want to try the new version where you could either move six or seven and leave the one out? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right. If you move one, you, that would be freehand where you draw something, which I know you allow, you love to do and you are so talented at it. Um, or, I'm sorry, one. We forgot the one. Never mind. Not, we're not going to do one. But you're still six. talented. One, two, three, four, five. Six is, yes, thank you, Barbara. But you are still right. talented and a little bit psychic, I think. Okay, so six would be unpinkable, and seven would be, did you know that? You know what? I'll go with, did you know that? All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the mood to learn something tonight. Ooh. Okay, I like, I like this one. I think this is a good question from, did you know that? Sarah, British customs officials seized and burned. 500 copies of which book in 1979 was oh. it lady chatterley's lover the joy of gay sex or ruby fruit jungle i'm gonna say joy of gay sex is that right whoa whoa yes yay <laughs> yes very good. <laughs> and the audience and the studio audience was really glad that you succeeded at that. So let me scoot you up here. Oh, Sarah, you're in the lead. Okay, now I'm going to remove your spotlight. Who would like to go next? I go. Barbara? Uh, All yellow. right. Yellow. Yellow. All right. Thank you so much for playing with us, Barbara. I always love your perspective. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't need to do that anymore. I'm just drop in the dice tower. Okay, you can move Ooh. six or nine. Six would be unpinkable. Okay. Uh -huh. Nine would be the closet. Will you share a coming out story? Again, it doesn't have to be about your sexual orientation or gender identity, and it shouldn't be about someone else's, but um, it could be coming out about anything, like um, being the slowest person on a nature walk because you stop and take so many pictures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to remind me what unpinkable is again. <laughs> unpinkable, it's kind of like chance. Um, I will read a card for you, and depending on what the card says, you would move either ahead or back. I suspect I'll be going back, but let's try unthinkable. All right. You suspect you will be going back. Hmm, okay. I don't know much. <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, okay, this, oh, I didn't spotlight you, Barbara. Oh. oh, okay. So the beauty, the beauty of unthinkable is mm. that you don't have to know anything, basically. Oh, okay. You are at an LGBTQ plus community event and you want to take photos of people there. You ask permission before snapping the photos. <gasps> Move ahead three spaces. Oh, oh, I see. And you're yellow. And I, positively, I positively would ask because I usually don't take pictures of people because I feel like it invades their privacy. <laughs> well, bravo oh, for you. Who's... Yes. Cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's very good. My it's cousin? Very... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Respecting people's privacy. Let's hear it for that. Yeah. What privacy? <laughs> Sarah, you were saying? Oh, my cousin? He he doesn't do that. He likes to put everything on Facebook. He'll live stream like anywhere. He'll live stream at a buffet or at a at a grocery store. But he comes to the pride parades and he just goes there to take pictures of people even if he doesn't ask. And just That's kinda rude. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, usually I, I do notice, I, I guess I have to admit, I, God knows how many Pride events I've been at in this lifetime. But it does seem that some people just go around and they they will just stop and take a photo of anything that captures their interest. And frankly, I don't think they even realize they're looking at people. I think they're look. I think they see costumes. I don't think they even like. I realize oh, there's a person in there to respect. And then other people are very good. And they say, "Oh my goodness, I really appreciate that costume." Can I take a picture? And I think there are some people. Now there definitely are some people who are wearing the kind of costumes at pride events where you can tell they would they expect and want to be photographed. They've spent a lot of time and effort <laughs> on their costumes, and you never take that picture. So it's a mixed bag, but it's always better to ask. Always better to ask. All right, who'd like to go next? Um, I will jump in. I, I don't know what's going on at this point. I, I had to take a phone call, so all is, all is copacetic. <laughs> I'm glad all is copacetic in the beautiful autumnal scene that you are immersed in. All um, right, Les, what color would you like to be? Um, green, is that available? It is. Green, green. is available. All right. And now I'm going to like whoop, drop the dice in the tower. And, and you can six. move. Six, six oh, what Barbara rolled. You can move yeah. six, which would be unpinkable, or you can move nine, which would be the closet. Again, we're trying the <laughs> rapid round version where we oh, okay. only give you two choices instead of three. I like those, I think. Okay, so oh, what was the first one? Unpinkable. Okay. Unpinkable. Unpinkable. I'll go with that. Unpinkable. It works for me. Okay. I gotta find out what it is, yeah. All righty. Let's find out what unpinkable is. Ooh. Okay. Here we go. You, whoops, you are waiting tables, and here you are customer making anti-gay comments. You can't say anything because you are an employee. Move back oh. two spaces. Oh. But you haven't gone anywhere. Three. That's right. Oh, you have. Okay, so you've gone you, somewhere. You are back there, and yeah, yeah, it's what I want to. Well, at least you're on the board. A sad situation to be in. Yeah, you're well, on the board. If, if that were me in real life, I would have said something and quit as soon as they tried to fire me. Exactly. I think I think I would do the same thing. There's yeah. plenty of restaurant jobs to be had. Yeah. Huh. And I wouldn't want to work at a place that would fire me for that. You know, if they would fire me for responding to that, go ahead, fire me. Yeah, yeah do yeah. it. I dare you. Make my day. Um, and I, I do want to report again for um, people who are watching that think that the LGBT community has made so many, so much progress. We have so many rights. Well, let's see. In August of this past summer, there was a couple at a, I forget the name of the chain restaurant in uh, Washington, D.C. They were brutally attacked and beaten. And just this past week, there was some guy, some couple at a McDonald's in Washington, D.C. I uh, got 15 people, a gang of 15 people, you know, were like, you know, start calling them faggot and telling them to get out. They didn't belong there. But of course, after telling them to get out, they didn't allow them to. They chose to, you know, beat them senseless. So I, I just need to point out for people who think that because gay stuff is so popular now, everybody seems to want to have a gay friend. Everyone mm -hmm. wants to be supportive and an ally. Okay, well, not everyone. Okay, what am I, what am I thinking of? I'm, del I'm delirious from election stress. Um, I, I just wanted to point out, it is not necessarily safe to be LGBTQ plus anywhere. You know, you just never know, even in the most liberal places, you can be at risk. And that's why Rainbow Quest is so important. And if you go to rainbowquest.org, which you see in the lower corner of the game board here, rainbowquest.org, you can buy a copy of the game, donate it to a local library or school or community center, or you can make the most generous donation you can. It's kind of like working out. They say work out until it hurts. So um, when you go to our website, donate until it hurts. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just throwing that out there because we need money. We know how to use it. Um, we get more done than major national organizations that claim to do what we actually accomplish with fun. So let's see, who is left there? Oh, uh, Val, uh, would you like to purple. go? Purple. Excellent. All right, Val's going to be purple. I'm going to put you in the gorgeous rainbow crystal dice it's tower. A, it's a Martin color, purple. <laughs> oh, yeah. What? Purple Martin. Yes. <laughs> okay, you can move two spaces. I'm sorry, three spaces or five spaces. Three, I think it's your, probably your favorite charades. You've got talent. And five, <laughs> five would be, you think you know me? Okay, well, thank God you're not asking me to draw. Um, I'm going to uh, do five. Okay, I had a mm -hmm. feeling you might like that one. You're all about, you know, community and groups and growing together and things like that. Thank so you, yes, the, I am. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. The question for you Oh, wow. Oh, oh, I think you're going to succeed on this one, Val. Yeah. Because I think we all know you hang out with the right people. Of course. And when you hang out, and you are often judged by the people you hang out with. 
you're often similar to them. Let's see what happens here. Oh, so okay. the situation for Val, don't tell us your answer yet. Whoops. You submit a letter defending LGBTQ plus rights to your local newspaper. Do you sign your real name? We have to guess silently right now. Um, what would Val do? Would Val sign her real name to a newspaper um, letter to the editor defending LGBTQ plus rights? So when everyone, Val, do you think you know what you would do? I oh, do. I forgot to highlight you. I have to highlight Valerie. That's way okay. Here we go. <laughs> ha ha. <laughs> and all the way from Maine. And a lot of people don't know that Starlink, was it Starlink that, what was the project that began up near Farmington? Like one of the major space communication programs. I forget the name of it now. A really cool naming spaceship. Oh, well, I'll, I'll think of it and report back next time. Anyway, so, Val, you know what you would do? Um, Barbara, would you like to guess? I think she would definitely sign her name. Sarah, what thinkest thou? I think she would. She would, yes. I think she would. Les, what do you think? Um, I Since think... best friends and all, Les. <laughs> I, I, think, I think she would, too. A, because of who she is, and B, because if you're writing a letter in defense, you have to use your name. I mean, it's just the ethical thing to do. Ooh. Oh, that's a refreshing idea. So, Val, what would you do? Ding, 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 ding. You're all right. Hell to the yes. <laughs> Yay. All right. A woman of conviction. No. Thank you. And thank you for your advocacy. I am uh, not afraid I... to get in people's faces. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. So, let's see. Les and Valerie, you might not be best friends. However, do you know where Les lives now? I don't. Where do you live, Les? Uh, Syracuse. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's where I did my PhD. I was on the half a decade plan. I love that place. Oh, and that's you? <laughs> mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I well, I live I live two blocks from the edge from Marshall Street from the edge campus. Oh. Yeah. I just thought I'd mention me. that. Uh, okay. that an example of the connections that can be made uh, through the miracle of the Rainbow Quest experience. Well, Valerie, well, and because something... people match you, you succeeded and you don't have to take oh. a nap. Well, and, and one thing about Syracuse is there is such a vibrant activist community there that I really, really miss. You know, yes. the council and the cultural workers and the no. Catholic workers. And oh, man, Les, I'm so glad you're there. Yeah. I'm going to well, come visit you. <laughs> please do. I have room where I live, too, for, for overnight company. I Yeah, I, you know, I had no idea until I actually, you know, when you actually live here. I mean, there was so much good stuff happening. But if yes. you don't actually live here, there's no way of doing it. So, yeah, I've been really excited. Good but, things. Good people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you're there. Oh, we have to talk later because I'll have to introduce you to some people. <laughs> oh, the other Syracuse That's connection great. is another former guest, uh, both in the Real Life Concert Series that Martin and I used to do in Maine and on, in the Rainbow Room here. Uh, Tom Wilson Weinberg is from Syracuse originally. I didn't realize that. Oh, my. In fact, one of the cafes, one of the coffee houses where Martin performed in Syracuse was the building that Tom's grandfather owned and had ran his business out of. So Tom has kind of grown up there. Very wow. small world. Very small world. It's a, um, it's a very cool community. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And Val, thank you for um, thank you for giving those vocal props to the people doing the hard work again, heavy lifting, uh, to uplift people in Syracuse. Oh, oh yeah, they're good people. Uh -huh. Okay, now so far we've done one round of the uh, rapid round, Rainbow Quest rapid round, and we're not so rapid like... though. <laughs> well, we're not. We're not rushing. Stephen, our timekeeper, couldn't make it today, so mm -hmm. we can we we don't have to rush through everything. If we don't want to, and I didn't sing, I didn't take up any time singing. No news roundup, really. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm yep. trying to stay quiet. I, I need a co-host. I do, I do need a co-host or someone who can remote control zap me to get me to stop talking. I, I don't think that's can possible. Ryan. <laughs> no. Well, if I requ if I requested it, that's like all. I've known you what thirty something years. It ain't happening. <laughs> well, Martin, Martin used to do it. Martin used to. I mean, believe me, I had to, when Martin and I did the show together. You know. Yeah, I got a lot of elbow jams. Martin had bony elbows. Yes, he did. He did. Yeah, <laughs> and and that's how that's why I often stop talking when we did live from the Rainbow Room. <laughs> well, so anyway, um, I'm kind of liking the rapid round thing, and um, shall we do one more round and see who's in the lead and and see who gets the big prize tonight? Sure, we can do uh, one more. All right. right. Hey. There's so prizes. Far, well, yeah. So far, so far, <laughs> Dwayne. Damn it! Our vice president, bless his heart, and a major donor through his um, bespoke uh, hold fast bespoke clothing company. He's donated quite a lot to help us accomplish our mission. Um, you know, volunteered at conferences and conventions, been a huge help. And um, he won the first several games, and of course, he refused a prize. But who knows? Who knows what someone tonight might want? Yeah. So anyway, um, Barbara, I'm going to throw the dice in the tower for you. Sarah's first. 
Sarah's oh. first. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, you're red. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Whoa. You got a four and a four. You can move either four or eight spaces. So one, two, three, four is you can quote me. Five, six, seven, eight is on Pink Double again. Okay. How about you can quote me? <laughs> Very good. Good choice, Sarah. I like that because there is a lot of quotes in the game. Of course, in the next edition, we have to remove a lot of quotes. There's too many. They will be in an expansion pack. We're doing all kinds of stuff to reshape the Rainbow Quest experience. So the, an orange, you can quote me card for you. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, this is kind of like pop culture. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I have to well, put you in the spotlight. There you go. Okay. The, the quote. I could tell Christopher Reeve wasn't gay because he didn't close his eyes when I kissed him. Was it Margot Kidder, the actress, or Michael Caine, actor? You know, I have a feeling it's the actress, but I'm going to say Michael Caine anyway. <laughs> Whoa, Sarah. Go, Sarah. That is correct. Whoa. Yes, Michael Caine. <laughs> and the correct oh. answer is marked by the pink triangle here. And I'm sorry I can't get that focused well. It's in a shadow. We believe you. Okay, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. And let's see, uh, Barbara, no, uh, yeah, Barbara, you're next, right? Yes, yellow. Okay, all right. I'm about to put the spotlight on Toss her. the dice in the <laughs> tower. Oh, oh, yes, sure, I will do that. Move the tower over. Bottom of the spotlight. And <laughs> take you off the spotlight. There we go. All this. So the Wizard of Oz was very talented to control oh. everything the way that he did behind the curtain. Okay, here we go. Into the into the black hole, into the abyss. <laughs> the rainbow abyss. We've had a lot of sixes tonight. Yeah, sure. okay. six yeah. and two. So you can move either six or eight. Okay. And six would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Unpickable. And eight would be rainbow choice where you do whatever you want. I don't remember what my choices are, but I want to go farther, so I'll do rainbow choice. <laughs> Okay, and we, you know, isn't it interesting, Barbara, for those of you who don't watch regularly, Barbara usually sits it out and observes and has a great time watching us play. And tonight, whoa, she's unleashed and she is going far. We don't right. have many so people playing, Brian. I'm being cooperative. <laughs> Your <laughs> choice. Thank you. <laughs> thank it's you. A, it's You're a being group effort. <laughs> You're being a wonderful ally and friend, and I do thank you for that. And thank all of Rainbow Quest thanks you for I'm that. happy to be here. We're mm. glad. So, so give Rainbow Choice. Out of my choices. Okay. I don't want to draw. Do, well, <laughs> you're, well, then you're not going to. I can't do you, charades. You can. <laughs> well, we won't, okay, let's forget What's that left? one, then. <laughs> you can do, you can quote me, just between us, you think you know me. I want to do what you think you know me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or less, I don't think he knows me very well, but the other people do. Okay. He's pretty good at okay. deducting, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. You think you know me. So, and don't tell, don't tell, don't anyone say what you think yet. Barbara's Bank begins contributing to anti-gay causes. You have a good relationship with the tellers. Do you change to a bank which promotes social justice? So we have to figure out what Barbara would do. Her bank begins contributing to anti-gay causes. She has a good relationship with the tellers. Does Barbara change to a bank that promotes social justice? Hmm. 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 This could be tricky. That's tough. Be because the tellers are the people with the least power at the bank. Yeah. Um, but then again, your money is contributing to the health of that bank that bank. So Ooh, I don't know. I think she might I think she might change banks. Interesting. So we have one vote for changing banks. Uh, Sarah, what do you think Barbara would do? She's very supportive, so she would change banks. because she, she cares about social justice. Les, what do you think Barbara would do? Yeah, I agree. I think she would change banks because, you know, do, doing her money business at that bank is profiting the shareholders, not the bank tellers as well, you know. Sure, they'll make some good points. So, Barbara, what would you do? I think I talked to them first and see if there was any way they could change their position. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have to tell you, I was a member of the United Methodist Church. And when they decided they were not going to support the gay community, that they wouldn't perform marriages and stuff like that, I dropped my membership in the church. I'm still supporting my local congregation, but none of my money is going to the, the larger church. Yeah. And I don't intend to change that position. Recovery um, so, Catholic. <laughs> so, yeah, if 
if I needed to, I would change bags. No. All righty. Well, everybody got to know you a little better. And that's really good <laughs> to right. know. I mean, my, my conflict with that is realizing that so many of the, so many of the big corporations anymore will donate to both sides. They'll mm. do, you know, and, and that's confusing. But again, as long as, you know, I guess if it's mm. equitable, if they're giving an anti-gay group $50,000 and if they give me $50,000 to do things with Rainbow Quest, I guess mm. I could live with that. But if they gave me $2,000 at an anti-gay organization, 50000 Oh boy, I wouldn't just be changing banks. I'd be blowing whistles at all these signs. Sorry. Well, That's no, I'm, I'm careful what I do with my money in terms of what I support. And if I'm affiliated with an organization that's that's doing things with money that I can't agree with, something's got to change. I like that you're starting with talking to them first, though, because they need to know that somebody has noticed. Yeah. You're yeah. considering changing because of that. I think that's really important. Because if enough tellers hear that, they are going to talk amongst themselves because what do they do when there's no one in the bank? There's a lot of downtime and mm -hmm. they talk like, what do you learn today? What do you hear? And they'll say, oh my God, I, I, yeah, you know, it might be that every one of them has heard it. And, they, and those kind of things do um, get channeled up, you know, to, you know, through the bank manager and to the regional manager, you know, it depends on the largest of the spheres, I suppose. If you I, know see what Barb I, mean. skipping, I see Barb skipping the tellers and going right to the manager. Is it the tellers who are responsible? Because like they are low man on the totem pole. No, I, I'd go, I'd go to the head guy. <laughs> I'm, you, I'm, I'm a little bit like you are, Valerie, you know, I don't waste time with the small stuff. <laughs> it's not the teller's fault. Mm. No. True. It's nice yeah. that, it so makes me feel so good to know that there are people here right this instant, separated by miles, but together and united in values and commitment. And that, I mean, every <laughs> single one of us right now in this room, in, in the Zoom room is doing, is actively busy you know, doing what we can to keep the world going and make it better. And, and I'm really impressed with awesome. all of you. So cool. thank you. And let's see. And we will be, I'm very excited. I think I will be getting a grant from a local bank. I don't know how much yet, but that's why I'm having a meeting tomorrow to kind of see how much it's reasonable to request. But it's so exciting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Me. Yeah. And of course, that came about because I showed up at an event. It was a networking event. Oh. And it was the night before Halloween. And it the the announcement said, a spirited night of mischief. Join us for a spirited night of mischief. And then all this spooky, stylized writing going on. So, of course, and it was at this a very beautiful, kind of upper class, upscale boutique hotel. And I thought, oh, certainly, this is such an Instagrammable place. Of course, people are going to be in over the top costumes. I'm just going to have to show up in whatever little rainbow questy thing I can throw together. And sure enough, <laughs> I mean, other than a few people wearing like a tie with pumpkins on it, I, I was it. I was the only one in the costume. Mm -hmm. It kind of worked really well for me, I have to admit. It did. Um, I got all the networking done mm -hmm. while everyone else just ate hors d'oeuvres. <sighs> <laughs> now, the owner thanked me for coming, and then she made sure, I, she said, please come tomorrow night. We're having a Halloween party. So I did show up and, again, made some excellent connections. Mm -hmm. And that was when the Instagrammable costumes were there. That okay. was the over-the-top party. That was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm really hoping we will get a bank. If we can get a bank, a grant from a bank, I mean, there's gonna be a lot more people I'm not dying. I'm really happy about that. It makes me very happy. Okay, so Barbara, thank you. You succeeded at the You Think You Know Me Challenge. And okay. now it is Les's turn. I'm Les green. is green. Uh -huh. I'm going to toss you in the rainbow abyss, the crystal abyss. Okay, you can move five or right. eight. One, two, three, four, five is the closet where you can share a coming out story. And eight, would be a charade if you would like to oh, charade. Yeah. <laughs> I I can't <laughs> do a charade, so I will take the default of a coming out story. Well, you know, it doesn't have to be seen as a default. It could be a treat. Maybe you have one that just you've been dying to tell. It could be from long ago or just yesterday. Oh. Oh my god. I I need a minute to think about this. Um, sure. It's not highlighted. Oh. oh, I have to highlight Les while he's thinking. Oh, he's coming out. <laughs> no um, pressure, Les. Yeah. No pressure. yeah. <laughs> Why does this sound like porn music? Oh, okay. I have one. Oh, good. Okay. So, well, they're often kind of, I don't know, um, rough stories of my story. Okay, here's one coming out story. Um, I, uh, I came out of the closet in um, all the way out in 1974 um, when I was a student at the University of Würzburg in Germany. 
<laughs> That's easy for you to say. <laughs> Both of them. And, 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 uh, and I met my first long-term partner um, who had been my, uh, my, my German teacher in summer school that year. And, and anyways, that's another story how all of that came about. Um, but we went um, on summer vacation, a couple of years later, I guess, on summer vacation. He's a, he, he, was, he was from Minnesota um, and we went to Minneapolis, stayed with a sister and her husband, and we went to a party that some friends of his were throwing and they were all straight people. Um, this is in the late seventies and they were all in their let's say 30 ish, something like that. And, uh, and I was in my mid twenties anyways. So, um, I was on the buffet line, um, you know, helping myself to food and okay, so far. Okay. And a friend of his came up to me. It was a woman. I mean, I don't think the gender makes any difference, but so she came up to me and she said, so, um, how do you know Dennis? And I said, we're lovers. <laughs> and she was horrified. Oh. <laughs> I mean, she like just was totally horrified. I guess she shouldn't have asked them. <laughs> well, no, I mean, and you know, and Dennis had always, I don't know, I, I don't know the difference, you know, there's kind of fundamental difference where, you know, I had always had, had always encountered resistance um, or, or, you know, to the point of rejection with, coming out to straight people and he was all very confident because all of his friends you know liked him and loved him and trusted him and you know looking back i i'm not clear whether any of them ever knew he was gay i don't you know if he came out you know so well it was a revelation to this one person um Guess so and she said um i forget exactly she said something that was very ugly and, and i went straight to dennis and i said we're leaving this party now mm good choice and you know and that was it we're going mm. now you have no choice we're leaving i don't want to be around these people and we left her you know and that, nobody that was, should behave like that yeah well, it was a different wow. different time you know yeah 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 definitely um and people had no qualms about expressing their uh, disappointment or distaste or disrespect yeah. for anything like that like it was all considered smut yeah. back yeah. then like, how dare you talk about your personal life? But now they all talk about getting engaged and having yeah, a baby yeah. and just wanting to have a new baby. Yeah. Well, ah, and well I guess, I'm so sorry. That's thank terrible. Thank you for but sharing that. Yeah, with you. Well, the, the thing that amazed me the most, I mean, I was, you know, you know, just what amazed me the most was that my reaction was that I was furious. You know, I didn't feel, you know, I wasn't coward or, or felt less than or any of that stuff. It was like, no, this is not acceptable. You know, and I just that was a gut gut reaction to it, which really surprised me. Anyway, so it's a good boundary. Yeah. It's a good boundary. Well, Don't it's not stay away you know, from toxic situations. I might have been surprised if you said that to me, but but I don't think I would have criticized you or attacked you. Well, the Midwest. Um, what when was this? In the seventies. This was in the late seventies in Minneapolis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's and I thought Mary Tyler Moore changed at all. She probably did. <laughs> Pretty sure she was straight though. <laughs> the Minneapolis. Oh yeah, really but, but she was so nice and Even cheerful. You know, you'd think. Well, thank you for sharing that, Les. Um, yes. And again, it's good to uh, be reminded that there are some really funny and wonderful coming out stories that have great endings. And then there are others that are just like, you know, they really bring back some pain. I mean, I could tell, you know, to me, it looked like when you were talking about it, I, I could feel that, like, you, you were back there. Yeah. You yeah. know, so thank you for sharing that. I'm going to remove the spotlight from you now. Yeah. Well, I, feel, I feel indignant that you were treated that way. <laughs> Oh, I, yes. I, feel really, I feel really proud because you got angry and decided it was time to leave instead of feeling bad. Yeah. That took courage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that took a lot of courage. Yeah. I'm just really impressed at the story that you shared and the empathy and compassion that other people here are expressing about it. This is a high point in today's game. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it does take courage to do that. And also, but it also says a lot about your partner. He left with you. And yeah, there are. Some that would say, no, you know, suffer through it. I'm not going to leave. And I think, you know, luckily, your partner stood by your side. No, no. no. And, and my, uh, I guess my takeaway, you know, because my mother would ask me stuff, you know, it's like, can't believe you're asking me this question. But, you know, um, um, if you want to hear my answer, you have to be, be, be prepared for what it might be, you know. That's right. If you want to ask the question, be prepared to hear the answer. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I was just so annoyed that. After I came out, when I came out to my mom, 
And then she said, well, I thought you came out five years ago. You know, I won't, I'm not going to repeat the story because I'm going to save it for if I land in the closet and have to share it. But she thought I had come out five years earlier. Where was the conversation? I don't recall any conversation about coming out. Like, yeah. where was her reaction? Was she, re is that why she was so, uh, mm, I don't know. Uh, you know, she, you know, was it just the way she was or was she reacting to that information that was boiling over in her without her saying a word? May she rest in peace. Okay, Valerie, it is your okay. turn. I'm going to start yeah. with, I'm not going to top less the story, so <laughs> bring it <laughs> We don't know that, though. We do not know that. That's the thing about Rainbow Quest that I found. Every time I think it can't get better, it can. And which, wow, that, that's kind of like the it gets fire thing. But no, it's amazing. Thanks for that it, pressure, Ryan. Bring it on. <laughs> well, no, Val, I mean, but you know, I, there, you know, one of the one of the Marvin Halmish songs that he wrote for Barbara Streisand is called "Ordinary Miracles," and it's about mm -hmm. the people that are kind of quiet and they go about their life and they perform ordinary miracles every day. And you know, they don't necessarily seek recognition for it or get recognition for it, mm -hmm. but they're still quiet heroes performing miracles. So who knows, Valerie? Who knows what we might discover? Yeah. You know, Bring we, it on. I have no I'm idea. purple. Okay, you're purple. <laughs> I'm Martin Purple. All right. Here we go. Tumbling down the dice tower. Okay. You can move five or seven. And you are purple. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, would be freehand where you could draw. That won't be happening. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Fine. Or seven. Uh, you've got talent, which is a charade. Oh. <laughs> now this is interesting now. this oh. i think in the new version of the game we're trying this week the rainbow quest rapid round version where instead of three choices each player gets two choices on their turn they can move the higher of the two numbers or the sum and here the higher number would have been freehand which is drawing or um you've got talent which is yellow and these are two choices that the player valerie is not very happy about what is going to happen next I think because she's the last player, she should get three choices. Oh, uh, you know what? Just give me what you got for charades. Val Pointing out that I spent my life in the pit orchestra instead of on stage for a reason. <laughs> so okay, Valerie, I appreciate and applaud all your bravery. <laughs> and, um, I think you might get this. I think you could probably pull this one off. Um, so there's a 90 second timer, which I will turn over for you. If we're enjoying you squirm, I'll turn it over again and not make a big deal about it. You just keep going. Uh -huh. um, now, well, I do like, well, I, I just want to point out, Barbara did make a beautiful suggestion that because you're the last player, we should give you a special dispensation and offer you three choices. It's because, because I was I was pulling the pity card. <laughs> yeah. I was building up to that. Because <laughs> two Fine. would have been, you think you know me. And you oh, probably so would have selected better. that. Yeah, that would have been for you. No, I would have. <laughs> yeah. But I appreciate, I think we should, I think we all should applaud the fact that you're willing, whoops, sorry, wrong sound effect here. Ha ha. This goes we okay. all applaud your bravery. Yes. Thank you for trying something new and challenging. It's part of the excitement of the game. You know, the game doesn't make you do anything totally embarrassing for real. It's not a humiliating game, but so it does. Okay. It does challenge you. And there are a lot of things I've learned from other players and how to communicate with charades that I couldn't do before I saw other people do it. So, mm -hmm. Valerie, I am going to send you through a private message a. Mm -hmm what you are supposed to be doing. Now, of course, I could cheat and send it to everyone, but I'm going to try not to make that mistake. <laughs> okay. It, and I'll just let everyone know, it is a movie title. Movie title. Movie. I'm trying to remember if my friend in Maine... No, okay, that was too... One of my friends... Never mind. Okay, I don't want to give it away. Okay, uh, film title, and it's from 1994. I'll give you that background context. Boom. Ah. Ah. <laughs> I'm sorry, let me turn my sound off. Are you okay, Val? Oh, you're starting? Val has started. Okay, I'm turning over the timer. Oh, you can't see. Oh, Bill? Uh, it's saying my internet connection is a little unstable. Oh, you're you're still you're still with, uh, right. oh sorry about that. Um, I, Wait, I, was it literally just priest? <laughs> priest? Or... Oh, and they got, you know what? My inter Whoa, that's weird. I... My inter As you were doing priest however you did it my internet connection went down okay uh -huh. so oh. i am back here now i did say i'm a recovering catholic uh -huh. <laughs> I, oh. i've never heard of the movie priest and yet i, I was just oh no i haven't either <laughs> that Brian, can you tell us anything about the movie i can i certainly can and every card does have a brief description so that everyone can learn about it so mm -hmm. priest is the story of father greg pilkington 
as he struggles with his calling as a conservative Catholic priest and his own sexual orientation. Wow, mm -hmm. a conservative Catholic priest. That's going to be an intense story. There's always a reason for that, and that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. And uh, I, yeah, there's a lot of research that would suggest that the uh, people who struggle most are the people that are most likely to succeed. Okay. Oh, sorry. I hope the, I hope we're still connect. Oh, and my internet connection. Suddenly, is being Brian just dropped out. <laughs> um, I see uh -oh. me here. Um, in one screen, I see myself. <laughs> Hello? Are we all still here? Sure. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, yes. I'm gonna guess I'm gonna guess that the as the election results are coming in. That was a lightning strike. Church I'm back, right? Well, no. Am I back? Am I back? <laughs> whatever his, whatever his, uh, your sound is. Yes. We lost your summarizing thoughts, though. Like, okay. there you are, Brian. That was one more time. Okay, I, we I, got you, Brian. You're back. Okay, I'm glad I am back. Could we unpin me, please? I'm tired of looking oh, at you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Let me unpin <laughs> you, Valerie. Much. I'm sorry. <laughs> and that was really good. I'm sorry that because of my internet connection, I did not get to see um, what you did that worked so well. And I need to get to the spot where I can <laughs> the spotlight. Whatever it was, it 